Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alan from Nonzo Studios, and I just want to say welcome back to our Premiere Pro 2017 for beginner series. Um, this particular video is part two in the series, and I just want to do a quick recap of part one. In part one, we created a project, we opened up that project, um, we ingested some footage by just importing some footage um, from from locations on our hard drive and what we did with that footage once we got it into our project window we showed you how to double click on a clip to bring it up to your source monitor we showed you how to uh, preview that clip in your source monitor by dragging your playhead around and then set your in point and your out point set your in point by hitting the i on your keyboard then setting the out point by hitting the o on your keyboard and then we showed you how to bring that portion of the clip that you wanted to work with down to your timeline in order to work with that clip further okay now in part two we're just going to show you some different ways of doing the same things now, if you guys are familiar with Photoshop, you guys will, will know that Photoshop have like a million different ways of doing the same thing. Um, Premiere is, is similar in that way where it has multiple ways of performing the same function. All right, so last time we double click on the clip to bring it up to the source monitor. This time I just wanted to show you that you can also drag a clip to your source monitor, like so. Okay, and some of you guys may be thinking to yourself, okay, so what happened to that 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 previous clip, the clip that, that was already there? Did it replace it or did it just stack it? No, well, well, it, it kind of stacked it on top of each other. So you can, if you drag another clip into the to the source monitor or double click on it to bring it up to the source monitor, it doesn't replace the clip that, that's already there. It's still there. And as, as a matter of fact, if you come up here to this icon and click on it, you will see that I have all these clips. All right. So now, as you saw, you can, you can toggle in between those clips by just clicking, selecting that icon there, and just <clears throat> click on the clip that you want to work with. So say you wanted to edit, so you were doing your edits down here and you've determined that, okay, that my in and out points were a, a bit too long, so I'm just gonna adjust it here. I'm just gonna, I just, I just saw I dragged the end of the clip and I can slide it back over here. And you wanted to add another clip. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to cut it here, another way to, to, to um, adjust this clip here, I can hit the C key on my keyboard and that gives me my blade tool and I can just cut it here and I can hit the V key on my keyboard it gives me my selection tool back and I can select this and hit the delete key on my keyboard and delete that clip okay now if I wanted to bring another clip I remember that we already have all those clips here so I can come up here and select that clip that I wanted I don't have to go down here and search through my project window because believe me that sometimes you're going to end up with quite a bit of clips down here. And if you're not, you know, extremely organized, then you might have to go down here and search. But if you already had it in your source monitor, then you can just come up here and click on your little icon here, and then you can find it here. You know, for instance, if I want my number three and I want a, a different portion of my number three, I can drag my playhead around scrub through a little bit and then uh, determine that, okay, I wanted this portion of the same clip that I already had. So I wanted this young lady here. I can mark my end point by hitting my eye on my keyboard, scrub through, see how much of her I want. And if I want just about that much, I can hit my O for my out point. And another way to get it down to my timeline is by dragging it over to my program window if i drag it to my program window look at that you have all of these different icons that you can perform these type of edits i can perform i can drag it here for overlay insert after and overwrite replace i can do all these types of edits and we'll, we'll talk about that in later videos so for right now i'm just going to drag it here for insert edit and it does the same thing as if i drag it directly to the timeline i can do the same thing that I did previously. I can hit my C key and I can cut it there and I can hit my V key on my keyboard to get my selection tool back, select that and I can delete it. Now look at that, it left a little space there when I deleted it. So um, let's undo that real quick. There's another way to delete it and have it ripple down so so that 
there's no gap. So we don't want that gap. We don't, I mean, we can drag it down, but just to eliminate one step, we can hold down our option key and hit delete. And look at that, it rippled down for us. So we saved ourselves one step. And trust me, when you're, when you're, when you're editing a long video, every bit of second that you can save counts. So we have two clips in our timeline that we like. So let's, let's, let's bring another clip in. All right, so let's come back up here and we already have all these clips in our time in our source monitor. So let's drag another one. Let's let's bring another one down to our timeline. So let's say we wanted um, YouTube six. We want a portion of that. We can scrub through by dragging our playhead through a little bit and just determining what portion of this one we wanted to bring. And let's bring Miss Goofy in and see what we can do here. Uh, so we, we dragged it, we determined what portion, we say, okay, we wanted her. So we did the same thing, create, hit the I key create um, to create an endpoint, scrub through a little bit, watch her do her little goofy thing, and then go through and then hit the O key for her out. And another way we can bring this down to our timeline is by hitting the comma key on our keyboard. All right. So you see, notice that because our playhead was right at the beginning of the clip, that's where it did. It did an insert edit right there at the beginning. So let's undo that. So if we had our playhead, say for instance, we had this over here, we could do the same thing. And what it would do, it, it would place, if we hit the comma shortcut key, it put it right there where the playhead is. Okay, we'll do an insert edit right there. All right, guys. So we just discussed three different ways in order to bring our clips from our source monitor to our timeline. The first way was to drag it directly to the, to the timeline once we had our in and out point. Second way is we drag it over here and we had all these different icons in which we can just drop it and perform the edit. I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with Final Cut Pro 7. That Final Cut Pro 7 had that feature. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, that Premiere Pro has that feature as well. And the third and final way we discussed was to hit the comma key for a shortcut. Now, now let's go back to our source monitor for a quick second. Um, in our source monitor, as, as you notice that we have all of these here, so we can come up here and we can click on this icon to, 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 to toggle through our different videos in our source monitor. But another way to do this is by creating a shortcut to do this for you. Cause you know, like I said, we're all about shortcuts here, fast and efficient. So on my particular system, I have my shortcut set where I can toggle through the different videos. If I hold on my shift key and hit my up arrow, I can toggle through all the videos in my, in my source monitor. Okay. Let me show you how to do that real quickly. Now, if you're on a Macintosh, like I am, what you will do is you go to your premier pro CC, um, icon there and you can come down to your keyboard shortcut and you can get your keyboard di um, dialog box like so. Now any shortcut you set here will affect the entire application. So if you click where it says command, you click here and you come down to source monitor, but twirl down and expand your source monitor panel, then any keyboard shortcut you set here will only be available once your source monitor is selected. Once your source monitor is the focus, that's when you, you're going to be able to use these shortcuts. And I prefer that because some of the, that way I don't have to worry about all these different shortcuts that's already in place for the application itself. Okay. So as, as you can see here, these are the shortcuts that I set for my source panel. Example of how to set it is that you select it, you hold on your modifier key as it, it shows you here what's associated with your modifier key. I'm holding down my shift modifier and it tells me that, okay, with the shift, I already have these. And if you scroll over, it'll tell you what exactly you have, what exactly is these are set for. Okay. And these are set for all the different things that I have down here. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them in the comments below. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.